All right, I'm one classes. Today we're talking about uh, rhombuses, rectangles, and squares. Uh, these are more types of parallelograms. So real quick reminder of the properties of parallelograms that we went over last time. I'm gonna sketch out a parallelogram uh, real quick, best I can on my board here. So we have a parallelogram. Things I want you to remember about parallelograms is that the opposite sides are congruent and parallel. So I'm gonna put in congruent tick marks and parallel arrows. The opposite sides, congruent and parallel. Then we have the opposite angles are congruent, even though it doesn't look so much on this one because I did not do a great job of sketching it out. The opposite angles are also congruent. So these are congruent. And then if they're next to each other, consecutive angles add up to 180, they're supplementary. So everything about parallelograms is true about the rhombuses, rectangles, and squares that we're gonna cover today. Um, so that's just important to remember. Everything that's true about our parallelogram is true about these three figures. The reason for that is these are the all these are parallelograms. They're just more specific types of parallelograms. Let's talk about what these things are. Uh, if you don't already know, most of you probably already know what these things are. But we'll start with rhombus, the one that most people probably are not as familiar with as a rectangle and a square. But a rhombus is a parallelogram with all four sides being the same. Everything is the same. Um, a rectangle is a parallelogram with four equal angles. And as a consequence of that, the angles have to be 90 degrees. All right, so a rectangle is a parallelogram with 90 degree angles, all right? Then a square is like a rectangular rhombus. All sides are equal and all angles are 90 degrees. That's it. So uh, first part about today is identifying looking at a shape and identifying, is it a rhombus, is it a rectangle, or is it a square, or is it just a, a random parallelogram, a non-specific parallelogram? So let's talk about that. So starting off, um, these are the first four problems from the assignment. Uh, identify what is the most specific name for each. Here we have uh, all sides are equal, all angles are 90 degrees, so this is a square. This one, all angles are 90 degrees, but the sides, we have two different side lengths. This is a rectangle. Um, number three, all sides are equal, not 90 degree angles, but all sides equal. So this is a rhombus. And here, doesn't say anything about sides being equal or angles being equal. Uh, we just have parallel sides. So this means this is a non-specific Parallelogram. So the next type of problems that we're, we're talking about uh, are gonna be using properties of the parallelograms to find uh, X. So um, the last few problems you're gonna have to uh, solve a set of equations to solve. So here we have a parallelogram the opposite sides are congruent, or excuse me, opposite angles are congruent. So the stuff in the equation here, these are the same. So we need to go 30X, 36X minus two is equal to 70, and then solve for X. So first thing I'm gonna do is add two to both sides. So minus two plus two cancels out, 36X is equal to 72, divide by 36 you get X is equal to two. And you just need to figure, think about what the relationship between the given angles is. Remember the box, that means 90. So this is 90. Uh, this then is a rectangle. Opposite sides are congruent. So that's 90 degrees. This has to be 90 degrees. In fact, everything in here is gonna be 90. So you do X plus 90 is equal to 90. Subtract 90 from both sides. You get X is equal to 90 minus 90 is zero. X is zero. Fine. Next one. So here, be careful with what you're looking at. 
on this finding X, these angles are now next to each other. So this angle would be congruent to this one across from it. B would be congruent to X. Uh, it is not congruent to, to U. So what you need to remember is angles that are next to each other, consecutive angles add up to 180. So this would be 7X plus 6 plus 125 is equal to 180. So here, um, combine like terms, 7X doesn't have a like terms, so let's bring it down. 6 plus 125 is 131, it's equal to 180. Subtract 131 from both sides. This cancels out, you get 7X is equal to 49, divide by seven, X equals seven. All right, so same thing with this one. These are next to each other, so they're not equal. They add up to 180. So you're gonna do 7X minus seven plus 124 is equal to 180. And then solve for X. Start off combining like terms. 7X doesn't have a like term, so I'm gonna bring it down. Minus seven plus 124, that's gonna be plus a positive 117. Subtract 117 from both sides. So plus 117 minus 117 cancels out. You get 7x is equal to 63. Divide both sides by seven. You get x is equal to nine. All right, now we're dealing with the sides. So the sides, uh, the opposite sides are congruent. So this is gonna be same use need to set these equal to each other. So this is congruent to this. So you get 15 plus X is equal to 15. So this would be real quick to solve. All you need to do is subtract 15 from both sides. You get X is equal to zero. Same thing here, this side's congruent to this side, opposite sides are congruent in parallelograms, so you just get X plus six is equal to 14, so them equal to each other, subtract six from both sides. You get X is equal to eight. All right, two more problems we're gonna talk about. Um, the only thing, these are the same with the sides. The only thing that's slightly different is that you're going to have X's on both sides of the equal sign. Let me set this up. Um, X plus six is equal to two X minus three. Again, opposite sides are congruent. So they're equal to each other. Um, when you're solving this, you want the X's on the same side of the equal sign. So I'm going to move this X over the other side. Um, I like to move the smaller X because that will keep things positive. So you subtract X from both sides. All that's left over here is 6. 2X minus X is just X minus 3. And then add 3 to both sides to get X by itself. You get 9 is equal to X. 2X, this one, actually before. You just remember opposite sides are congruent. So you just set the two expressions equal to each other. 2x minus 9 is equal to x plus 1. And now just solve for x. Um, so again, get the x's on the same side. So I'm going to move uh, the 1x over the other side to keep things positive. So this cancels out. 2x minus 1x is just 1x. And you get minus nine is equal to one. Add nine to both sides. You get X is equal to 10. And that is it for today. If you have any questions, uh, just give me an email. Uh, other than that, we will see you guys next time.